Alright, New Year. I think it's time to really challenge myself with a video topic that I can go in depth with and discuss in a nuanced way. So what have we got to talk about? Is this what my life is becoming, sitting here just mocking a movie made for infants? So Postman Pat. I think I'm gonna have to do a quick history lesson for those who didn't grow up with British television. Postman Pat is a stop motion animated series that ran from 1981 all the way until 2017, albeit with large breaks in between seasons. The original was actually done by the director of The Wombles, which is a story for a whole other day because I've got a lot to say about that series. I grew up watching this show, meaning I'm pretty nostalgic towards it, even if most of my exposure came from the YTP that turned him into an Irish stereotype Postman Patrick. Hey Jesus, what's going on down here? We fucking here for standing in the middle of the fucking road. The series revolved around surprise, surprise, Postman Pat, with his black and white cat Jess, as they travel around the town of Green Deal delivering posts to the residents and getting into wacky scenarios such as Pat always thought he had managed to keep the date of his birthday to himself. It is a cloudy morning, but the sun brightens up, and Pat is having a late day after his van gets stuck in the mud. Green Deal has not had any rain for weeks, and it is a very hot day today, and the water supply has had to have been turned off. Oh, that's right, this was a British show. Meaning it was boring. But in all seriousness, while I doubt it could hold a child's attention nowadays, the series is actually quite charming and pleasant to watch. It's not groundbreaking by any stretch of the imagination, but it's just something you can turn your mind off and watch. It's like you're watching a live feed of an actual postman going about their day. Even seeing his drive to each location, there's something oddly cathartic about it. No, I know what you're thinking. This grounded, peaceful watch-along of a middle-aged postman mundanely giving people packages would make a great film. And Lionsgate must have heard you, because in 2014 we got just that. It wasn't received well and only earned around $9 million, yet it was still considered a success, which makes me very curious as to what the budget was. The movie just kinda came and went without many curring. You know, probably because it's the Postman Pat movie. But many people I've asked aren't even aware that this film exists. It's one of those films you walk by the poster for and go, What? That's getting a movie? And then you move on with your life. And I did just that for many years. But now I think it's time to look at Postman Pat the movie, and see if this Postman was able to deliver the goods. I'm really sorry. So just how were they able to make a movie about delivering post? Well, they didn't. Instead of the plot being something like, Pat has to deliver this super important thing across the country and must go on a road trip to get there in time. You know, something involving his job. It's instead, Pat doesn't get a promotion, and so must enter a singing competition so we can afford to send his wife to Italy. Yep. That's all. I know it's hard to transition a TV show to a movie, because you have to make the story top anything the show ever did, while also making it so anything done in the show after doesn't feel like a step down, but this just seems like such an inconsequential plot to put in the big screen. Is what I would be saying if they didn't go completely off the walls and introduce a mustache twirling villain who wants to take over the post station, and then continue to rule the world, using his robots that are designed to look like Pat. And I won't stop there. We'll diversify into other businesses. We'll make automated bank tellers, robotic technical support, even computer animated movies! We also get another villain who's the agent of past competition of the talent show because for some reason there are only two contestants. He's also voiced by David Tennant, who is trying his absolute hardest to make this movie interesting. Alright, ya pestilent posty. I'm gonna return you to send out. So the whole movie is torn between which of these stories they want to focus on with both films constantly pushing for screen time, when really only one was needed. But the general idea is that while the whole world is going through Pat mania, his wife and son start to get upset once he becomes too busy to be with them. And this busyness also leads to the Pat bots, or as I'm gonna call them, metal pats, being made. Which nobody in the entire town seems to realise are not the real Pat. Like they witness multiple metal pats with glowing blue eyes walking around and never bat an eye until it's spelled out to them by a child. This all culminates in a Shrek 2-esque finale with the villain singing a song as the hero and his sidekick tirelessly try to reach them in time. And by Shrek 2-esque, I mean take the ending to Shrek 2 and remove all the great animation characters we've come to love, and remove I Need a Hero with... <sighs> really happy postman? An original song composed for this movie that's uh... Yeah, it's a song. It sure is. A s I hate that, I kinda like it. The original songs in this movie are not bad at all, although none of them can top the greatness that is the original show theme song. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, 
Just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Absolute perfection. In terms of characters, I was shocked to see a bunch of new faces pop up. I was also confused by Pat going from a one-man postal service to working inside a giant post factory of co-workers and a boss, with a bunch of new gadgets and vehicles to mess around with available at your local toy store. I assumed they were all added for the sake of the movie, but it actually turns out this movie was based on a sequel series called Postman Pat Special Delivery Service. Now, I'm all for expanding the Postman Pat lore, but I kind of preferred it when it was just a quaint little show about a small town postman. Yes, I'm genuinely upset about this children's cartoon. Speaking of which, the movie's animation is not much better compared to that show. I don't really mind that it's not stop motion anymore since in all those shows all the characters would look into your soul with their dead expressions and that wouldn't really work for an hour and a half movie. But it's clear that the budget for this was not high at all given the comparison I stated. The movements aren't bad but they try to be a lot more cartoony with a style that just wasn't made for it. They also have these really bizarre scene transitions where the background disappears first then the character like what was the budget for this? who thought this was okay. Plus, they didn't even have the money or time to fix simple things, like during a flashback of Pat getting Jess, you can see a picture in the background of... Jess? Okay. But who cares if the world looks bland and the characters are animated poorly? It's all about how they're written, right? So just how is this postman and his colourful cast of comrades? Meh. Pat is a really bland protagonist, I know I'm talking about the protagonist of a baby movie, but still. He's got everything going for him. A nice house, a wife, a kid. His only struggle is trying to win the singing contest, but what happens if he loses? He just has to wait a few more paychecks before getting to go to Italy. The stakes are truly high with this one. It's not like he cares about winning it either. Speaking of the contest, Pat is for some reason like a god at singing out of nowhere. There's no implication at all that he likes to sing or even the most simple option of having him sing to himself as he drives around delivering meal in the opening. But whatever, he's great at everything, moving on. Jess, yes we're talking about the character of a cat, is meant to be the comic relief sidekick. She was used for that in the original but here it's ramped up to 11. She's been redesigned to give her some more emotion but it feels entirely due to the big creepy pupils. Look at the original Jess. This is perfection, you don't need to do anymore. Pat's wife and son are barely worth talking about. They're just there to give Pat a goal in mind for what he wants to achieve because this man seems completely content with his life. In terms of the new characters, I actually don't mind the villain that David Tennant plays. He tries to kill Pat, like straight up murder him at various points and just kind of gets away with it in the end, as it then punishes the other bad guy because the movie wants to have a message about technology bad or something like that. Like I mentioned earlier, it really seems like David Tennant is trying his hardest to make an entertaining character and I'm not entirely sure if I'd like it as much if he was voiced by someone else. Although he does go a little too far at times. Like, dude, please stop humping the young boy like that, you're on television. The only other notable character is Pat's rival, who is voiced by Ronald Weasley, and he does nothing the entire film, he just kind of sits on his game console. The real star of the show is the talent competition judge, who is literally called Simon Cowbell. So they're clearly throwing all subtlety out the window, as his show is very obviously a parody of The X Factor. I actually found the original animatic for this film, which by the way, these characters look so much better in 2D. But in the original animatic, they literally used the X Factor intro when introducing the show. He's quite entertaining at times. Actually, I'm from Ireland originally then I hope all the horseless carriages and aeroplanes here haven't frightened you. And they definitely tried to amp up the meta humour with him. And an all expense paid trip to Italy. Oh, hang on, did you say Italy? That's right, Italy. Hold on, just, I, I don't have a pen. And for those of you in Greendale without pens, auditions are this Sunday at 5 o'clock. And speaking of meta humour on top of their lack of subtlety, it also carried over to the many clever and hidden references to the original series. There's an entire scene after Pat gets discovered that does nothing but boast about how popular Pat is and how it was such a unique and creative idea that had a one in a million chance of becoming big. And I was just sitting there thinking, you guys do realise Postman Pat isn't that popular, right? Like sure, he's an incredibly popular British character, but if you asked a kid about Postman Pat nowadays, they probably wouldn't have a clue about who you were talking about. They seem to think Postman Pat is the second coming of Christ or something. I also see a lot of people acting like this movie is some huge disgrace to the phenomenal original series, but I mean, it's Postman Pat, it's not worth getting so worked up over. In the end, was this movie good? No. But again, let's not act like the original was anything that amusing. There's a very fine line, I believe, between fairly criticising a piece of children's media and getting incredibly worked up over something that's basically harmless. And that's what I believe this movie is. 
harmless. I wouldn't recommend anyone ever watch it, it's more boring than anything. But if I'm being honest, I've seen a lot worse than this. I'm sorry to those of you who are expecting a massive freakout, but there's a lot more important stuff to worry about out there than a Postman Pat movie. Like how it's been 8 months since my Scooby-Doo 2 video, and the IMDB score is still a 5 out of 10, y'all better get on that right now! I can't believe this is how I'm ending my first video of the new decade, but this was my review of Postman Pat the movie. I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and let's hope we have something better to talk about next time. You feel that power, lad? <laughs> Ryan, look out!